Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. We're going to be doing part three of our video series where I'm making a collet adapter for the KT mill to hold an ER40 collet. Um, I get to finish up the actual retaining nuts in this video, but if you're observant, you'll notice there's a little bit of a time warp going on here because in a couple of the operations, I actually have the completed uh, collet holding system in place, machining you know, the final stages on the collet nuts. And the reason for that is, you know, I grouped these operations based on the setup that I had on the mill and I was actually jumping forth between a couple different parts, both on this project, doing the nuts, the retaining plates, and other, other parts with other projects that required the same type of setup. But that didn't make for the best order of uh, viewing the video, so I kind of selected out all of the operations for actually finishing up the collet nuts and then put them together in this video series. And just recognize that in part four, where I start the retaining plates for the, for the collet holder, that uh, you know I, I was kind of going back and forth between a couple of these parts. So if you didn't notice it, I will actually be pointing it out in the video, but uh, let's get on and show you how I finish up these collet retaining nuts. So next operation is 10 holes, um, 213 diameter. I'm going to go a little bit deeper, 700 thousandths deep. We're going to tap those quarter 28, half inch deep. The um, x-axis on the table I've got arranged along this. So we're going to have one hole at uh, zero degrees, but actually the head to do that is 90. And then it's 12 degrees, another 48, and then these are 60 apart. So we've got both a six bolt pattern and um, an offset eight bolt pattern, excuse me, um, one, two, three, four, yeah. An offset eight bolt pattern and a six bolt pattern for the two different styles of retaining nuts. The bolt circle is 2.875, so half of that is 1.375. I've dialed that into the rotary head. So all we have to do is spot them, rotate the head around, and continue until we get them all. So on the dial, I have a head offset of 1 inch, 400, 3, 7, 5, splitting the, the, the lines on the vernier here. So that's an offset of 1.4375. And I'm centered over position 1. So all I have to do is watch my scale. My head scale is 90 degrees for that first hole. So I'm going to be going in 12 degree increments on either side of this then 48 degrees, then uh, 60 degrees. So doing a little bit of math, but uh, we'll get there. I'm always going to be coming in the same direction with the head. Three degrees per rotation of the hand wheel. So three, six, nine. Twelve. And as a double check, 78 degrees plus 12 is 90. So we'll continue on. Next increment is 48 degrees. So that's 30 degrees on the scale of the head. I should write these down. It also helps that these will align with the points of the nut. Sixty more. Ten. 20, 30, 40, 50, it's 330 on the scale. Ten, 20, 30, 40, 48. 
which is 12 degrees off of the horizontal axis. Next one is 270. Fifty-eight and two ten. Next is one fifty. And 48 more, 10, 20, 30, 40, 6, 7, 8, so that is 102. So there's my bolt pattern uh, for the first nut. Rather than you know swapping out to a drill and drilling these, I'm going to step over and do the spot uh, locations on, on this one. Then I'll switch to the drill one time and come back and just go through all the positions and drill. Just keeping track of things as I mill, this was my high-tech system of counting 12 five thousandths passes um, to get uh, the faces milled and then 10 five thousandths passes to get the shoulder um, to the right height. So this was to get the, the nuts, overall height of the nuts correct. This was to get the step to the right height. And then these are the degree um, points on the rotary head for the 10 hole locations starting at 90. And I just got to turn them to these locations for the second nut and uh, have all those holes spotted. Switch over to incremental, we're keeping the same head offset that we had, we're just changing the center of the tool to this one, and we're already aligned at 90 degrees, so once I hit to zero, I'll start with that hole right there. Okay, now it's just lather, rinse, repeat. Okay, there we have everything ready for the drilling operation. So I'm going to swap out um, the center drill for a finished drill. I think it's a 213, which is the tap drill size for a quarter 28. Okay, I'm going to use the same technique. I've got the um, quill set up so that it will bottom out at the required hole depth. There are kickouts available for this for the quill. It's a little mechanism that bolts onto the side of the quill that I do not have. I'm going to have to duplicate it. But let's see if we can uh, pop out 20 holes here in rapid fire succession.
going to do one additional operation while I've got the uh, parts set up, and that's uh, going to chamfer the holes. And I'm going to chamfer them just beyond the major thread diameter before I thread them. Slow the head down a little bit. That should be sufficient. That's to a setting of 40. I was working on a couple projects at a time, but the next operation for this required me to put the uh, Troike 18 inch rotary table on the bed of the uh, mill. So this was a struggle because I have the overhead crane not quite far enough in its travel to get the table, you know, uh, over, over, the, uh, over the mill table, but I got it on there and it barely fits. I'm actually clamping on the T-slots at the very end of the table past where you, you know, scrub all the chips off. So it just fits. There is room for a vise to the right of it, but uh, got everything set up. I can reach the center point of the rotary table with the X travel and zero it. And that's what I needed to begin work on the collet nuts to get the six faces machine true to each other. This is the reason that I knocked the points off of that hex while it was still mounted to the spindle. So I would have some surfaces to indicate to get this nut centered on the rotary table. I needed to machine the flats of the nut so that you know all the exterior surfaces of the nut were, were machined and in balance. So I got the nut centered and now I'm tramming along the one face to set up uh, with the scale on the rotary table so I can increment 60 degrees at a time and machine each face. Okay, with the collet nut, we're centered on the table. And the table, um, I've, I've got a zero point for that. We're offsetting, we run this surface in parallel to the X travel, I've locked the table down. And so we're basically just gonna go until this cleans up, um, index 60 degrees, and continue on and do all six sides of the nut. If any of them don't clean up, I will increase the depth of cut until it does. And then we'll just continue around and duplicate that on the rest of the faces. And then we'll have all of the ODs, or all of the uh, parallel faces of this nut running true to the bore. Because once again, I indicated off of the the OD which was done to the bore. We're just making contact. I'm going to slow the table feet down. I'm going to come in five thousandths. Yes. 
slow the table down a bit more. Alright, this is not cleaning up, so we definitely have to go another 5,000 steeper. This is actually one operation that I could do with the fourth axis of the KNT rotary head because you can park that head at, a, at an angle like 60 degrees and then use the axis to walk the cutter around each one of the faces of the nuts. But it really would be kind of a pain because you have to have an origin starting point for each point of travel. And then if you had to creep in five thousandths like I did, you would have to reconfigure those starting points for every one of those six axes. So it's really better to do it on the rotary table. Now we go back over the ones that we already machined that aren't quite deep enough. Final operation will be with this cutter, 20 degree angle, one inch shank. You gotta bring the head back to zero. Well, the finished product is quite pretty. I've got the uh, edges knocked off, top and bottom. So basically all the exterior surfaces are fully machined and everything is true to the actual uh, spindle mount. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, final set of operations there to finish up the retaining nuts for the uh, collet holding system. I really enjoyed using the rotary table for that 
last operation of machining the flats on the nuts that gave me you know every external surface on the collet nut was fully machined so everything is in balance and running and running true and I think you'll agree that they, they really came out nice to have a fully finished machine look now the next thing I got to make for this is an actual spanner wrench that is sized for the for the collet nuts so I'm not using the you know uh, pipe wrench on the hex and when I do tighten it I am using you know either a wood shim or a lot of layers of uh, paper towel or um, or a rag in there so I don't you know dig in and put uh, chew marks on the on a finished surfaces of the hex nut so we'll be making a spanner wrench to install this call it nut uh, in an upcoming video series so hope you enjoyed that for engineers workshop uh, part four coming up next where I make the retainer plates we'll see if I can wrap that up in one video don't know if I can but uh, thanks again for watching thank you for all the new subscribers uh, check out my updates on Instagram at engineers workshop 1964 and until then as always stay safe